Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Jack from CAD Games and today I'm going to be showing you how I completed my dual render scope solution that can be seen here in this video. So obviously this is quite a realistic take on creating a scope for a game. So uh, that's what I'm shooting for here because x Knight is supposed to be a realistic competitive shooter. So I obviously wanted to shoot for the realism in the... Uh, ADSing. So what I did was I actually modeled this scope after a real scope. Um, so basically it should have very similar properties, although not one to one. It has similar properties to a real uh, rifle scope. So basically uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and get your mesh. So here's my mesh of the scope. I have a uh, model that I got off of a free website, T3DFM. And so what you can do is you get your scope model and you want to make sure that uh, whatever, if you were to model this yourself, make sure that there is not any lenses on either end uh, as a texture already built in or make it a separate component because you're going to remove those. So next what you're going to do is after you get your model, you're going to position it on your weapon uh, as I've already done. And so now what you want to do is you're going to create a cylinder, a separate cylinder, sort of a ring. And so I'll go ahead and get my pieces here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's this. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and model yourself a ring type uh, cylinder. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get an emissive, uh, sorry, emissive, texture and so um, basically I have this uh, shader called MK Glow and you can get that on the asset store for free and I set it to MK Glow slash emissive slash diffuse and so that is going to be the black effect inside of our scope that you can see so right now with that removed you can see that it's a nasty gray color because of the texture that I put on here but um, with that uh, all you're gonna do is you're going to line it up inside of the scope to the point where um, all of the gray texture or whatever texture you have in here is covered up by it so you can't see that anymore and so then you're gonna get this e uh, really nice black effect which is pretty realistic and then what you're going to do is you're gonna go into the description and download this shader that I've included uh, for this glass here and so me, I've actually modeled this glass lens here on the back, but you can actually just use a regular old cylinder to do it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the shader that I left in the description. Uh, it'll be under custom and then magnification. And you're going to put that shader on the uh, cylinder. And then you're going to position the cylinder as if it were a lens at the back of the scope. Um, so you can see it at the back there and what what that'll do is it'll basically zoom anything in that is on the other side of it so for me I've set my magnification to 1.9 you can have it at 1, 2, 10 whatever you want it to be at 1.9 works pretty well for me um, it also has to, it'll be interfered with by the position of your weapon whenever you are aiming so uh, you have to take into the account the uh, field of view whenever aiming. So whenever I aim in, my field of view is 35 and the weapon is positioned pretty close to me. So this works out pretty well. It appears uh, just about like that whenever I'm aiming. Uh, you can see it here. Um, but anyways, if we keep going here, um, you're going to have that in the back there and then you can add a separate lens like I did for reflectivity. Uh, it's not a must-have, but I thought it looked good because I want to have flares and uh, lens reflections coming off whenever I'm walking around. But uh, now let's actually get into the scope part. So I'm going to go and just remove these two pieces. So you can see inside of here now, and you can see that it's no longer magnified and there's no uh, glass on the back. So for the scope, what you're going to do is you're going to make a new cylinder and then you are going to come down into somewhere uh, in your assets area and you're going to hit create and then you're going to click render texture uh, you can name this whatever you want um, scope or something uh, since I already have one I'm not going to worry about it so I'm going to delete that but then what you're going to do is you're going to create a new material and then you can call that scope uh, something like that and then you're going to use the Legacy Shader Self-Illumination Bumped Diffuse. So if we go here, 
Legacy Shaders, Self Illume, Bump Diffuse. And then you're going to drag that render texture that you created into the base. And then you're going to leave the rest of it blank. So as we can see here, that is what I've done. Uh, my coloring is actually a little bit darker because it looked a little unrealistic before. But basically, if you were to use a different shader, such as the standard shader, it looks really uh, like ugly and gross, grayed out. So having this self-illumination is really nice. Um, so now, with your render texture, you need to have the render texture on a camera. So what I've done is I've created a camera, and I've put it under the cylinder, and I've made sure that it's centered. Um, so there we go, centered. And then you're going to back that camera up. Um, a good distance from the actual cylinder and you're going to change the culling mask so that it doesn't render the gun layer, the player layer, and the scope cylinder layer. So I've actually made all those layers so my player object right there is the player layer. Here is the gun layer which it, uh, includes, well this is the scope cylinder layer but here's the gun layer so it won't render the gun and then this is also on the scope cylinder layer so to make a layer you hit add layer and then you can just easily type in something here, so scope cylinder, all those things. Those are already done. So once that's done and you've added it so that the uh, it's not rendering those three items, your player, your gun, and your scope cylinder, now what you're going to do is you're going to add a bunch of image effects to that same camera. So what I've done is I've added the same image effects that I have on my main camera so that we can get a similar effect. So I've added my volumetric light renderer, uh, and uh, ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, uh, and I added a few lens aberrations so you can see if I zoom in here, the blue around the edges. So that is from the lens aberrations. Those aren't necessarily needed, but I added them for a better effect. And then you're also going to add a screen overlay. So what I've made here is I have an image of a scope reticle. So I've actually put that on there. And then I have another one. This is also the same, or it's a different one without the thick bars. And that just basically, if I was to remove that, you can see that the line here in the center gets uh, really faded and harder to see and then also so do the edges so I added the pretty much the same thing twice you can do the same thing twice or you can do um, two different reticles here and so once you're done with that you're also going to go back into the camera area and you're going to adjust your field of view to match however much you want to zoom in I found that using 7.5 field of view is a pretty good number for a nice zoom. I don't know exactly the uh, magnification size, but uh, it works well for me. And then the last thing we're going to do is you're going to go back to where that original um, render texture was that you created, and you're going to drag it into the target texture here. So basically, the camera is linked to the render texture, which is linked to the, uh, to the material that is now on here. So. Now you're going to position this item inside of your scope and you're going to make sure it's out of the user's view. You're not going to put it on the back of the scope. You're going to make sure it's far enough so that if the user is just standing there like this, they cannot see it. So I found that putting it in the middle is pretty good uh, for this scope in particular. And if you put it too far, the way that the magnification shader that I showed you earlier works is it it doesn't actually enhance sort of like um, changing your field of view does it just makes it bigger so you can still see pixels if it's too far away so you're gonna want to make sure that it is close enough that you don't see any pixels when aiming down the sights sort of like that and then you're also gonna make want to make sure it's far enough so that you don't actually see the render so now that that is done and positioned and you have all of your black in here and everything and I'm gonna add my glass back as you can see, we have completed our scope. Uh, you don't, again, you don't necessarily need to create the glass, but if you do want to, here in my settings, I am on a standard specular um, shader. I added a little blur here. That is all. By the way, that is a transparent texture. I have it on black, and I have the uh, opacity set to zero. And here is my hex color number. 
for the specular, and I've also made it 0 0.9 for shininess. So that is the glass, and then you're pretty much done. Now the last thing that you can do is you can adjust how much it's actually zoomed in. So for me, if I come down here, the position, the zoom position, um, you're going to have to mess with your numbers however you set up your aiming. So I also have zoom FOV. So mine is at 35, and then here's my zoom position. Uh, whatever you got to do, you're going to have to do that on your own. I can't necessarily explain to you how you can fix that. But uh, just keep that in mind. And that is pretty much all you have to do to create a scope that has a dull render uh, type effect. And it looks really nice in game. Again, I'll keep playing this video for you if, have, if you haven't seen it already. So it looks super nice um, whenever you're just idle here. And then you zoom in and it just looks spectacular. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more tutorials or you want to learn more about our games, make sure you check out our channel, CAD Games, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.